Lipton Tea and Lipton Soup present Inner Sanctum Mysteries. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. This is your host to welcome you in through the squeaking door to another half hour of horror. Come in, won't you? Sit down. I hope you'll forgive me if I don't get up, but I'm terribly tired. I spent last night with a friend who's a book collector, specializes in bestsellers. He certainly showed me some interesting ones. In fact, he tried to bury me in one. Because all the very best sellers have corpses in them. <laughs> Why, that's downright silly. Most sellers do not have bodies in them. But of course they have, Mary. You know the old saying, even the walls have ears. Hmm? <laughs> you certainly don't make a house sound homey at all. Why don't you talk about the kitchen with its good, warm smells of homemade food? Yes, and while you're at it, you should mention Lipton tea, because Lipton's makes good food taste better. You see, folks, Lipton's has a brisk flavor. And brisk means that Lipton tea always tastes fresh and full-bodied, tangy and spirited, never flat or wishy-washy. That's why Lipton's is such a grand drink at mealtimes, and why it's the perfect beverage to serve when you're entertaining. That's right. That brisk flavor makes all the difference in the world. So, folks... Try Lipton's, won't you? And now, friends, if you're willing to gamble with your peace of mind, put out the lights and listen to Death by Scripture. It's an original radio play by that old grave digger, Robert Newman. Yes, and our star tonight is Stefan Schnabel, who plays the role of Stefan. The place is China. Somewhere near the outskirts of Shanghai, a man-made wasteland ravaged and devastated by war. Driving through an abandoned village on his way to a camp for displaced persons is Major Roger Mason. Suddenly, the glare of his headlights picks out a strange, wild-eyed figure who stares, then scuttles into the shelter of an alley. Mason hesitates for only a moment, then stops his jeep. Hello there. Come back here for a minute, will you? Hello. Okay, if you want to make a game out of it. There's Alley somewhere. Huh. Oh, there you are. Please. Please, Master, please. I mean no harm. Easy, uh, easy. Now, no one's going to hurt you. Certainly not me. I'm an American on my way to Camp 14. Camp 14? The camp for refugees, displaced persons. I know. I was there. Yes, I thought so. How was it they let you leave? They did not let me. I... I ran away. Oh? Why? Because to stay would have meant death. Seems to me it would be a lot more dangerous to go wandering around here. Suppose I take you back there with me. No. No, no, please. But I tell you, there's nothing to be afraid of. Huh? You think not? <laughs> Very well. What can man do against fate? I tried... You're a witness that I tried. But I warn you, if I go back, it will mean death. Not just for me, but for others. Many others. Tommy? Dr. Cronin? Yes. I'm Major Mason. I... Major Mason. I'm very happy to meet you. Welcome to Camp 14. I'm very glad to meet you, too. I've heard a great deal about you. The job you've been doing here. Oh, Dad. There was not much I could do when we were all prisoners. But now that we have been freed and are beginning to get food and medical supplies, it is almost like a holiday. May I present Miss Mia Singh, who has been assisting me? Major Mason? Miss Singh? I brought someone here with me, someone I picked up on the road, and... Stefan. I did not want to come back. He made me. Well, then he does come from the camp here? Yes, of course. A curious case. We have never been able to discover his last name or even his nationality. We have many kinds here, you know. White Russians, Koreans, Siamese, Burmese. Stefan, why did you do it? Why did you run away? Because I, 
I was afraid. Because of this. Another one. That same paper. What is it? We found about a dozen of them scattered around the camp this afternoon. But read it. You have not escaped. There is no escape. Do you recognize this symbol here? Japanese Black Dragon Society. It says there is no escape. And it's true. I tried to escape, and what happened? He brought me back. Our benefactor. Our savior. I told you there was nothing to be afraid of, Stefan. Afraid? Is death something to be feared? It is the one escape they cannot take from us. Death. To sleep. To rest. Hmm. To rest. He's really in a pretty bad state. Couldn't you put him up in the administration building? Hmm. That might be exactly what they want. Uh, what do you mean? It is not like the Black Dragon Society to want someone they mean to kill. But suppose they don't know exactly who they do want. Wouldn't they do what they seem to have done? Make a general threat and see who showed fear, who did run away? The war is over, Cornell. The Major is right, Doctor. Are we still living in the past? And we do have a room here where we can put Stefan. The one down the hall. Very well. But remember, I warned you. I, too, think it will mean death. Stefan. Stefan. The door's not locked, Major. Come in. I didn't know whether I'd be disturbing you, whether you were asleep. Sleep? I never sleep. Never. Never. You're feeling better, though, aren't you? Safer? It is at least quiet. A man can think. I was lying here... trying to remember. Trying to remember what? If I knew, I would know everything. But I don't know. There is much that I can remember. Such as what, Stan? The first one. The greatest one. Many lifetimes ago. The garden with a wall around it. The torchlight bright on their breastplates and helmets. And his face. Then the hill. The place of skulls. The earth shaking. Stop it, Stefan. Whatever it is you're talking about, it. it's horrible. Horrible, yes. But true. Those I can remember. I can't ever forget but what I can't remember is now who I am, what I must do, and why. It will be horrible, too. As bad as the others, but I... Look, Stephen, I... you're a sick man. Now, you've got to rest. You've got to stop thinking, brooding. I'm going to get you something, some medicine. That will help you to sleep. Then when you're strong again, we'll take you away from here. Sleep? I told you I do not sleep. I cannot sleep. No? We'll see about that. I'll be back in a few minutes. Sleep. He does not believe that it is not for me. Not even the final one, which is dreamless. What's that? Outside the door. This door. But who... Who is that? Who is there? Oh, no! No, no, no! <laughs> Yes, down at the end of the hall there, Stefan's room. Come on, quick. Major Mason, near. This way, down here. It sounded like shots, as if... It was. Look. Stefan. No, don't touch him. Let me see. Dead. Unless he's not flesh and blood. Three slugs right over the heart. Must have been fired right from the door there and... Good, Good Lord. What is it? His pulse, still there. Where's your surgery? Right next to the office. What well, there is of it. Here, help me carry him in there. We'll operate immediately. Swab. Inspector, right there. That's it. He must have. 
cut that off. You don't have another one, Major. Suit you then. Tired. How's his pulse? Weak, but steady. Another swab. That's it. Mm. Oh, I don't dare probe. Forceps. It, it is almost in the vena cava. No worse than the others. It's absolutely impossible. No one will believe it. But he's still alive. There. The last one. If it does pull through, if he even holds out for a couple of hours. I believe anything. How is he, Mia? I don't believe it either. But he's better. His pulse is still strong and there are no signs of shock. I'll stay with him for a while. You go get some sleep. No, I, I'm all right. I'd like to stay until we are sure that... <gasps> Major, look. He's coming too. No. Don't make me come back. Don't make me do it again. Don't. Hello, Stephen. How are you feeling? What? Oh, yes. The American. Why are you looking at me like that? Because you have no right to be alive now. And you wouldn't be if it were not for him. I never had any right to be alive. But I am. I won't die. I told you I wouldn't. I couldn't. Until I do what I have to do. And what's that? It is coming to me. Slowly. I'm beginning to remember. I do not see it all yet. But I know what it will mean. Vultures and blood. Coffins and death. Well, now we're starting to get somewhere. But I wish our friend with a bad memory would stop talking about what he has to do and do it. Here we are halfway through our story with only one shooting and no corpses. Things don't pick up. I'm going to get in there myself and show them how to pour gore. My goodness, aren't you ever satisfied? I've had the creeps ever since this story started. I just refuse to think about what's going to happen next. Well, as the doctor said, as he sewed himself up, suit yourself. <laughs> what an awful pun. Brr. Why, Mary, did you say brisk? <laughs> I did not say brisk, and I'll thank you not to make fun of that word, because it's a mighty important word in the language of tea experts. Yes, brisk. B-R-I-S-K is the word they use to describe the flavor of Lipton tea, because Lipton's always taste fresh and tangy, never flat or insipid. That's why it's the largest selling brand of tea in the whole world. Why, folks, you just don't know how good tea can be till you know how good Lipton's is. Oh, don't say that, Mary. Not till you've tried some of my special brew, tea and tea. Uh, terror, nightmare, and trouble. <laughs> it is the next evening, about ten o'clock at night. The dust-laden wind still wails around the lonely camp. And the refugees from many nations sit huddled in their rooms. Stefan, his face gaunt and drawn, is sitting propped up in bed in the administration building. Are you sure you feel well enough to talk, Stefan? There is pain, but that does not matter. What is it you wish to know, Major? You were shot, Stefan. You know that. Did you see who it was that shot you? Yes, I saw. But that is not important. It does not matter. What do you mean, it does not matter? Just that, Doctor. You see, much has come back to me. Not who I am, but what I must do. And I know now that I have nothing more to fear. That I was shot by mistake. Mistake? What the doctor said last night about the Black Dragon Society was quite true. There are 
Two men here in the camp for whom the Japanese have been searching for years. Men who have been leading the resistance movement in their own countries. Even now, the Black Dragon Society feels that those two men must die. Do you know who they are? Yes. Do not mention their names. Do not even think them. You know who they are, don't you, Mia? One of them is your own father, Ram Singh. And the other is Pao Tung. Is that true? Yes. It is true. Then I think we ought to go see them at once. Make provisions to get them away from here. That, then, is the situation, gentlemen. And I should like to have you escorted to Shanghai as soon as possible. You are very kind, Major. We felt that our best protection lay in anonymity. We may have been wrong. As for the danger, even though Japan has been beaten, not all the members of the Black Dragon nor their agents have been rounded up. So... Nonsense, Ram Singh. You always were too cautious. The Major is right. We should have declared ourselves, returned to our countries at once. I, for one, will be happy to do so now. Good. There are a few things in my room I would like to get first. It will not take but a moment. I will meet you back here. Fine. You still look worried, Father. Do I? Perhaps I am. After all these years, waiting, working, suffering, to be so close to what I waited and worked for... But what is there to be afraid of? The Major has promised you protection. I know, and I'm profoundly grateful. But I keep wondering how Stefan knew. Ah! What was that? Out on the compound, and it sounded like... Oh, Tung. Stay here, both. No, wait, I'm coming with you. Father, you stay here. Lock this door and do not let in anyone unless you know who it is. Major Mason. Major Mason, where are you? Over here. This blasted dust is so thick. Who's that? Colonel. You heard it, too? Yes. Sounded as if it came from... There he is. Paltum. Yes. Dead? Very. Throat cut from ear to ear. No. No, he... He just left us. He was only gone a minute. That minute was all somebody needed. Dr. Kornov, Ram Singh. Major Mason asked me to take you up to the administration building. Oh, uh, just a second. That, that scream out in the compound, uh, was it? Yes. Pao Tung. And, uh, and was he... Yes. Killed. That is why the Major wanted me to come and get you. To put you somewhere where you would be safe. You are ready? Yes. For Pao Tung... To have lived through so much, waited for so long, then... Is it known who did it? No, not yet. But they are closing the gates. Whoever it was will find it difficult to get away. Will they? I wonder. In this dark, where the dust so thick you can hardly see. Besides, suppose it is not someone from outside. Suppose it is someone... From the camp here. Someone who has been here for a long time. We... Oh. Dr. Kunov! Dr. Kunov, where are you? Dr. Kunov! Huh. Must have lost him as we came through the alley. With his wind. Dr. Kunov! Is that you? Who is it? Answer me! Tell me who it is! Oh, oh. No, 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 let me go, let me go. Open the door for me, will you, Mia? Of course, Major. Where are you going to put him? Yeah. Right here, in the office. You told the guards at the gate? They are closed now. No one will get out. But... Stefan, what are you doing up? You should not be out of bed. 
I... I heard something outside. A cry, and I had to see. Which one is it? Partoon. Dead? Yes. His throat cut. And the other? Your father, Mia. Dr. Kronoff went to get him. He is bringing him here where he will be safe. Now go back inside to bed. Father? Dr. Kronoff? Kronoff. Where is your father? Isn't he here? Well, why, no. You were going Didn't to... Didn't you go get him? Yes, yes, I did. We started across the compound together, but it was so dark. The dust was so thick. I lost him. I called to him, looked for him, and when there was no answer, I thought he had gone on ahead. Stay here, all of you. I'll go. I... I'm sorry, me. Why? Why are you looking at me that way? And what are you sorry about? I am sorry that we became separated, that I lost him. I am sorry that he's dead. Dead? How can you say that? Because he must be dead. Because it's part of the pattern, the cycle... That's that... enough, Stefan. Come on. I will take you back inside. You're a very sick man. Yes, and you should be. Yes, I'm sick. Not as sick as some, but sick enough. I won't go back, though. Not yet. I must wait. I'm not sure for what, but I know I must wait for something. Listen. Major Mason? Yes. You found him? Yes. Yes, I found him. Father. Father. I told you. I knew he had to be dead. Yes. Yes, he had to be dead. I think I knew it, too. Knew it was hopeless from the very beginning. How... How did it happen? Strangled. With this. Strangled. Dying out there in the darkness. Two of them killed within a few short minutes, and, and we still do not That's know... That's not completely true, Mia. You... You mean... You know... Your father and Pao Tung were around here for a long time. They died because Stefan revealed their identity. That means the murderer had to have access to that information. He had to know precisely where they were and when they were going to be alone. And he had to be able to get at the medical supplies here. The medical supplies? Because Pao Tung's throat was cut with a scalpel. And your father was strangled with a catcut suture. And that means... Don't I move, Connor. Did... Had you covered since I came in? Dr. Kornoff. No, I, I do not believe it. Thank you, my dear. I am sure that there will be quite a few others who will feel that same way. Stefan, you saw who shot you. Who was it? He. Kornoff. You too, eh, Stefan? Well, I have a little something here I'd like to show all of you. Something... Major, that... look out! Oh! Oh! Quite fast enough, Kornoff. At least you saved us the trouble of a trial. As for you, Stefan... Do not blame him, Major. It was not his fault. Not his fault? It was he who exposed your father in Pao Tong. I know. But I think I also know why he did it. You know? Then tell me in heaven's name. Here. This should not come from me, but... Take it. Money? You are giving me money? Yes. Silver. The amount may not be exactly right, but... Now, do you understand? Yes. Yes. Thank you. And bless you. I do understand everything... What I have done is what I must do. What does he understand? Why did you give him that money? There was once someone else who betrayed a friend and was paid for it with silver. Thirty pieces, to be exact. You mean? Yes. In the Bible. One Judas Iscariot. What that? That's mad, insane. 
Are you implying that he... that that's why he didn't die when he was shot? That he's eternal, immortal? I do not know. Perhaps he is not always the same. Perhaps in each crisis, in every period of history, there is always one who must play the role of the betrayer, even against his will. But this much I do know. That he is not immortal. Wait a minute. I just remembered the story of Judas in the Bible. Come on, quick. What's that? The money I gave him on the floor. And... Good heavens. Yes. Matthew 27, as I recall... And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Well, that's the kind of character we like to have on this program. A little slow getting started, but he did deliver in the end. Ah, two corpses, plus his own. A nice down-to-earth sort of chap who uh, wound up high in the air with a rope round his neck. Yes, we'll have to see that he's back with us again next week. Rope and all. Hmm? Use the rope? Of course we will. You know our motto, no noose is bad news. <laughs> well, that's not my motto, Mr. Host. Is that so, Mary? Now, don't give me any of your lip. <laughs> I certainly won't give you any of my Lipton. If you want Lipton tea, you can get it at your grocer's, just like anyone else. And by the way, folks, you'll find that it pays to ask for Lipton's in the larger, more economical size packages. That way, you not only save money, but you also make sure that you have a good supply on hand of that brisk-flavored Lipton tea. And you know, Lipton's is always welcome. <laughs> And now, here's a word of advice, friend. If you should be invited to spend the weekend with a friend in the country, and he should wake you at midnight, carrying a lantern and shovel, and invite you to go burying with him, make sure he doesn't mean burying with a you. And when I say you, I do mean you. <laughs> Oh, by the way, this month's Inner Sanctum Mystery Novel is The Whistling Legs by Roman McDougall. Yes, the next week's Inner Sanctum story, directed by Hyman Brown, and brought to you by Lipton Tea and Lipton Soup. Next week's story is about a honeymoon couple. Yeah, funny kind of characters to be on this program, eh? Is that what you were thinking? Well, this couple finds a corpse right in the middle of their bed... And they can't ask the corpse to leave, not to its face anyway, because, you see, it has no face. <laughs> uh, now it's time to close the squeaking door, so... Good night. Pleasant dreams. Hmm? <laughs> Here's a modern food with an old-fashioned, homemade flavor. Lipton's noodle soup. You see, Lipton's takes no time to prepare, and yet it's blessed with a real fresh-cooked chickeny taste. And what's more, it's swimming with tender golden egg noodles. That's why Lipton's is such a grand food to give your child when he comes home from school for lunch. Yes, it's quick and it's appetizing. You'll find that children enjoy Lipton's just as much as grown-ups do. Because it has the same good spices, the same rich, old-fashioned flavor as the chicken soup you'd make right at home. So, friends, don't forget to serve Lipton's noodle soup. And don't forget to tune in next Tuesday night for another Inner Sanctum Mystery. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.